We are down a man today. Rennie is over in Bali at a mate of his wedding. Uh, you missed Ren. Why is he in Bali, Will? He can only hang out with me for five weeks. Five weeks is enough. I'm here stress for weeks. Leave, stress leave, stress leave, stress leave. Now, while Rennie's not here, we're joined by a special guest on the panel today. Willie's new teeth. Willie, what about your choppers? <laughs> Thank you, mate. Can they're you notice good. them? No, I can't even tell. No. Subtle. Very subtle. When did you, what, how long were we in the chair for? Seven hours, mate. Seven I'm hours? I'm still getting used to it. I've still got to slur a little bit, but um, you can these are only, temp they're only temporary. And then I've got to go back in six weeks. So. Six is, well, you've just signed up to play in the Legends of League game. If I get my teeth knocked out, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Is that six weeks? <laughs> it's six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a big mouth guard. Yeah, a massive mouth guard. Now, speaking of mouth guards, the finals series started for 2017 on the weekend. There were four games. First game was Roosters versus the Broncos. It was a pretty low game. Yeah, I think as a, as a fan, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be happy with that product, you know, um... I think that our first semi-final, we want to we want to come out and just smash it, you know, the NRL and Brisbane would would have loved to, and the Roosters, they would have loved to put a better show on, but I'm pretty sure the Roosters would take the two points away from it. But you go out there and everybody's pumped up, everyone's you know at the game or watching it at the pub or watching it at home, and it was just like a big anti-climax until the last 20 minutes, and then everybody got excited, and then everyone starts forgetting about the start, yeah. how shit it was, because the first 60 minutes, I mean, like. It was pretty ordinary football from both stand, from from both great clubs like that. I expected a heap more. I mean, like the Roosters, there, um, you know, we're pretty much tipping them as, as grand finalists, and the Broncos, I was tipping them as you know to be at least final four. So yeah. um, they've got a lot of lot of work to do. But um, I think it was two it was two powerhouse clubs that came together, yeah. and everyone was expecting a good game. Then. I think the reason the Roosters got out to 14 nil is because the Broncos were poor. They were way off. And then the reason the Broncos got back into the game was because the Roosters were poor. Yeah. So rather than two sides playing really well and it all coming together, it was more like, well, one side sort of fell out. Like the Roosters should have been ahead by 40 points. Yeah, I thought, yeah. And it would have been one of them, ha one of them halves where you go, we should be at least like 26-4. Yeah. It was 14-6 at half time. So that in the Broncos' mentality would have been going, we're in this. We should be getting beat by 30. We've been playing that bad. And that's what probably brought them back. And Wayne would have been saying that at half time, going, you guys have been disgraceful for 40 minutes. You end up coming back 14-6. You should be happy. In terms of finals moments, what about oh, Latrell God. Mitchell yeah. in, in a clutch part of the game for a 19-year-old kid to do what he did? I mean, that was just phenomenal. I mean, just the year that he's had. I mean, like he come out of the blocks big time. And it was always little whispers around going, Latrell Mitchell, like he's this young little kid, you know, like he's the next Greg Inglis. Greg Inglis, yeah. You know, you don't really want that tag because Greg Inglis is such a great player. Yeah. But you can see it in him. He's living Left arm it. carry, right palm, yeah. strong as hell. Not as big as GI, but he's just like a little miniature pocket rocket. But he's not miniature. He's about six foot two. He's big. And he's 100 kilos. Yeah. So, you know, he come out of the blocks. He got put back to reserve grade. Yeah. You know, which, really, which, which, really, which really humbled yeah. him, you know what I mean? Because, but I love it how, he, how aggressive he is. Like, he hits you, he's in your face, like, he's, he's confident as anything. He's up against James Roberts, one of the best centers in the game. He throws him around like a rag doll. When the game's on the line, you know, you've got that week off, there's so much to ride for, and he just comes up with this ridiculous play. Makes and Jordan, Jordan Carr, who slips, he's under the post, game over. You actually picked the Broncos, I picked the Roosters, won all. One I was just trying make. to be nice, because I knew the Roosters would win. But uh, Rennie, picked, Rennie picked the Roosters too, well done, Ren. So you're one from one in that game. Yeah. The second game was the Melbourne Storm versus the Eels, and that was almost a massive boil over. Yeah, I mean, obviously Cameron Smith playing 356 games. He never loses like a, a testimonial game or anything that's got to yeah. do with him. 300, 200, 100, most tests, most origins. He barely origins. loses a game full stop. He rarely loses a game, but I mean, so I didn't really expect anything less, but I mean, like, um, Parramatta nearly got him. They did. You know, like they really give him a good shot. I mean, full credit to Melbourne, the fans had the biggest turnout of all finals teams. Yeah, I know. Melbourne. I know. Come on, man. Sydney, pick your game up. Well, and the thing was as well, I think, you know, Melbourne, with Cameron Smith having that big game for him, mm. I think the people of Melbourne actually, they showed finally a bit of respect for the Well, it's taken them what, Smith since 99? Yeah. To actually turn up. Yeah. I mean, they've been the most successful team in the game, I reckon, of AFL and NRL, a union, anything, any sport in Australia. They've been yeah. the most successful team over the 10 or 12 years. So. Yeah. About time Melbourne sort of picked it up and, um, you know, run with it. So good Pat, on the Pat, Melbourneers Pat, Pat, because they claim they're the sporting capital of the world. Well. Not world, but 
Australia. I don't think they ever claimed NRL when they were playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they give a shit about the <laughs> NRL, but at least they, they, they're caring now, you know, and they're yeah, caring about their players like Billy, Billy Cooper Cronk and Cameron who just held that whole city down. I think you look at Melbourne and they will definitely improve from that. Yeah. I, think, I think Parramatta ambushed them. Man, I reckon I would have hated to be in half time with Craig Bellamy then. He oh, would have the been paint. absolutely furious. Oh, you know what I mean? Like he's, a, he's, a, he's a brutal man, but he's fair. You know, like they wouldn't have been, they, they knew they were a little bit down. Parramatta were coming home. Pretty strong, like, and the back the back ends of the halves, Parramatta are really strong. They were, and they finished over the top. So that's a scary thing for Melbourne because that doesn't usually happen. Once their foot's on the on your throat, they usually put another you know 12, 14 points on you. But went down to the wire, which was good. So put the semi final football back in um, everyone's head. Well, we both picked the Storm, and yeah. Rennie picked the Storm, so he was two, and I was two from two. Yeah, yeah that's good. I'm yeah. going well, better than you. <laughs> the next game was Manly versus the Panthers. Um, it was a good game of footy. It was marred, obviously, by the controversy yeah. over some of the refereeing decisions, which we'll talk we'll about talk later. Better. But uh, the Panthers got there, and deservedly so. I said that. Like, I just thought that the easiest way and the easiest game for them would have been Manly because they, they just got belted by him the week before. And as a player, all you want to do is have another crack at him. And their forward pack got embarrassed, Penrith, the week before at, at Brookie. I mean, Lotto Land. But I mean... Um, <laughs> So the first thing you'd want to do as a forward was, was get one back at him. Yeah. And you could sort of see that was an, it was an even game. It could have went anywhere. Obviously, some decisions went the other way. But, um, yeah, Penrith were always going to be up for this. They've got the talent there. You know, it was only about just executing. You look at Manly too. Like, Manly can be pretty happy with their season. They, they, they performed poorly last year. They've yeah. got to this grant to, the, to that game, and they've really they've done quite well. So, I mean, it's not a lost season for Manly. They're no. obviously the first team that got eliminated, but uh, I think they can. I think be yeah, happy it, they'd, be, they'd be happy, but you'd be just a little bit disappointed how they went out. How they went out, you know. Yeah. We, obviously, obviously, we're going to touch on that later, but um, you know, they had a chance to make the final four. You know, they blew a couple of games there, probably about three in a row, where yeah. they really had a chance to really stamp themselves in the eight and in the top four. So they'll be a little bit disappointed, but like. They're going to have the same playing roster at, for next year. You know what I mean? So, Are they bought anyone? Not as yet, but I mean, they probably they've always had to. someone. I think they yeah. lost Brenton Lawrence and a couple other sort of older players, but the, the nucleus of the team, the Trebojevic is, you know, Cherry Evans. They reckon know. there's a third one. There's another Trebojevic. There's, another, there's a younger Trebojevic yeah, yeah, who's better reckon, than both of them. They reckon he's the grouse. Good luck. Yeah, They're well, both grouse players. They'll end up just having the entire Trebojevic family playing for me. <laughs> And then the fourth game was probably the, the big boil over, which no one really expected, um, which was when the Cowboys got yeah. up over Cronulla. Obviously, another, another sore point there for, for Sharks fans because, you know, you don't want to go out like that. And um, I didn't expect the Cowboys to win, but I expected them to compete for 80 minutes. Yeah. You know, so it was up to, I said it like, if Tom Malolo and uh, Morgan have big games, what they're, about they're due with an upset. Tao Malolo is He's a is beast, mate. Phenomenal. He's the best forward in the game. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I, I'd love to see him, like, I think they're playing him so many minutes in the middle. Like, you don't understand how hard he's in the middle these days. Everyone attacks you. So, like, I'd put him on an edge for a little while. You know, like, he's only 24 years old. You expect him to play 70, 80 minutes a game. I don't think he could last more than 10 years. And the way that he plays, he's averaging 200-something metres. Again. That's go forward. Yeah. Post tackles, everything like if you do some stats on him, he's probably running about 12, 13 K a game. Des Hasler stats? What would Des ha if Des book, had stats on him, the book, him, the, the book would be that thick and he'd be, be the big best big. best forward in the world. I tell you what, you wouldn't want to be in the middle against him. No, he hits hard, he, he runs hard, yeah. he steps off both feet, he offloads, he's got um I think he's really coming into his skin at the moment because you know, the last couple of years, even last year when he got Dalian player of the year, equal with Cooper Cronk, I still don't think he found himself as that leader within that side because of the JTs, because of the Matt Scotts and all these sort of people. But, you know, you lose Jimmy Tarmow, you know, he, he, he needed to step up. He just won the D Dally M, lock of the year, all these kind of rewards. So, you know, it's, it's time. To, I, I expected nothing different than what I'm seeing from Jason Tomlolo. Yeah, Morgan he, played well too. I mean, well, I mean he, he led him around in, yeah, in, in Morgan, I mean, for Everyone's saying probably, you know, there's no JT, they can't do it. That's the fire that's really burning, you know, like Morgan and Tamari Martin. Hasn't he added something? I you mean, know, that was a that was a mid-season transfer from Penrith. Yeah. I mean, look, Penrith have got that Tyrone yeah. May, and he's doing well. But you'd have to say yeah. that he's Tamari been there for Martin a while. Was, Tamari Martin, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's, he's been promising a lot. He's so played for New you Zealand. Put him, yeah, you put him into that. You put him into that structured, brilliant Cowboys backline, and you know he can make the most basic plays seem good. They've good got they've got, good a, they've got a culture up there that's similar to Melbourne. Yeah, 
You know, th you see the way that they, they lost JT, arguably the, 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 best, the best player in the world. Matt's got arguably the best prop in the world. And they're still in the finals now. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a massive rap to, like, to Paul Green and the whole staff and the whole North Queensland. Yeah. Now, and, I played, so, and I played for them, so I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm rubbing off on maybe Tom Malolo. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he debuted. He debuted. Like, I played. I, that's, that's my rap now. I can, I can say. You, oh, you I mentored I Jason I know, Tomalolo. Tom Malolo debuted when I played. Please. He was sitting next to me. What, on the bus? No, on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> So that leaves now the um, the Cowboys go on and play Parramatta, um, which is a massive game for Parramatta because, you know, again, um, they've, they've been starved of success probably in the last few years, and it's one of those big clubs. So 2009. 2009 when they made that big run. Yeah. You know, they got to the grand final and they got beat. So the fans, they're as passionate as anyone. So they're due for some success. They're expecting at least, at least a grand final berth. You'd think so. You know, so... Um, you know, their fans are similar to Bulldogs fans and South fans, all them traditional fans that are just crazy about their club. They'll die for their club. So Parramatta's been waiting for a while. You know, maybe it's their year. They and give Melbourne a big shock. Well, and that's the thing. They played it. It was a tough game against them. And the thing with them, they don't, they're not scared of anyone. No. You know what I mean? They got The wingers can score from anywhere. Their backs can score from anywhere. Their, their back row's tough. The front row's tough. The bench is coming on. They got, they're, they're really, really balanced everywhere. Mm. So... When you play a team like Parramatta, who don't, they're not really that structured. Like Brad Arthur goes, all right, just go out and play football, but just to a little bit of structure. Mm. That's what stuffs Melbourne up because Melbourne is so good at their structure and they know how to read structured plays. You know, so what you're throwing at them, you better throw something else at them than the usual plays, out the back, all this kind of stuff. You, know, you need offloads, second phase football because you can't plan to defend second phase football. So that's what gets them. And they've had injuries too. Like Gutherson was their best player all year. And they've, yeah. they've been playing without him. It's, yeah. yeah. Look, I, I think uh, tip-wise, I think that Parramatta should win that game. Yeah. But the Cowboys, realistically, the Cowboys are probably, they both had hard games. Maybe yeah. the Cowboys have got a bit more momentum. They're coming in. Yeah. No one expected them to win against. I don't on. think, no one expected them to make the eight. They're up there last week, ready to crack the beers for Mad Monday. Now they're two games away from a grand final, so yeah, good on them. The other game that will be played this week is the Broncos versus the Panthers. Um, Panthers will go in as underdogs, but I don't know if they deserve to be that way. If Darius Boyd plays and it's at Suncorp, that is a massive advantage. Did he ring you before the show to tell you he was playing like last week, or is that that was a one-off? He one was only off? joking last week. Was he? Yeah. He plays games like that, Dubs. <laughs> you know what he's like. He's a jokester. He learned from he's the best. He's a jokester. He learned from the best. But um, like up there, Wayne will be... I know what he's like. He, he wouldn't be too harsh on them, you know, because they did had some they did have some cattle out. But um, you know, this week they're they're expected to win. Yeah. You know, Penrith's got to travel. They've just played a really hard game. You know, so um, you know, the Broncos. I don't think they left everything on the table there last week. You know, in a semi final. So I think they got plenty in the gas. You know, I think a couple of their key players with their, their key leaders like Blair, he'd be out for redemption. I don't think he played his best game. Mm. You know, like uh, Milford, I think he was a little bit below par. You know, people are belting these players pillar to post. But, I mean, like, defending against the Roosters in that, in that structure, the way that they throw the ball around and, the, and the, the threats that they have, like the Boyd Corners and Guerreras, it's hard to defend. You know, so they, they're easy to throw Milford under the bus. And probably had the worst game of his career last week. You know, that's what people are saying. But, I mean, like, this week he could absolutely carve up Penrith. So if I was Penrith, I'd be like, please stop bagging him. And there'll be 50,000 up at Suncorp. So. They'll pack the house out yeah. and playing up there. If you're a Brisbane player or a Queensland player, that's the only thing I envied in my whole career was not being able to run out there and actually cheer for you. So they more, didn't like you. What the kill you? <laughs> you weren't a fan favourite. No, no, no. So that would mean that, so are you saying Eels or Cowboys? I don't know. Cowboys. You can't. Cowboys. Oh, no, 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 Cowboys. 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 I'm going the Cowboys. Go on Cowboys. I'm going Cowboys. There you go. So you're Only because going... I'm like an ex-player and stuff like that. They don't talk about you up there. They do. They don't. There's a JT statue and then I'm next to him. They'd have to use all the, in the chin. <laughs> a lot around the chin. Yeah. Now they, and then, now they have to redo it because of the teeth. The teeth are good. <laughs> the teeth are good. So, They'll grow on you. They'll grow on you. They're growing on you. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, so who do the Eels say? So that game then, that, that'll go into playing the Roosters. If the Eels, I, I think the Eels will win. The Eels will go through and play you're the always Roosters. Good. You, you just tip favourites, mate. 
I have so far. Actually. You were just, I, I could have I'm picked tipping the Roos. Penrith. I could have picked the Roosters last week. I'm tipping Penrith. What about that? Oh, are they favourites? No. They're probably favourites. I don't know if they are. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't can go and get I'm like. tipping the Bronx. If, You're tipping if, the Bronx? If Darius Boyd plays. If Darius Boyd. If he doesn't play, I'm Penrith. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be coming Texas during the game going, you know what? Yeah, I'm glad I picked them.